Hi, and welcome to this 10 minute tutorial for research. My name is Neil Ashton, and I'm a principal CFD specialist at AWS. And today I'm going to talk about computational fluid dynamics. Now, the key question, whether you're an academic or you're working towards uh, you know, a commercial project, is typically how do you design the next generation of something? It could be a car, it could be a plane, it could be a new skyscraper in the city, it could be some new medication to treat asthma. Most of the time, you're trying to do it as quickly as possible uh, with as low cost so that you can get this product out to do whatever it's supposed to do. Now, what I'm talking about today is computational fluid dynamics, but I want to take a step back and think how, what are the possible ways that you could design something? So you could do physical tests. So let's think of a car. You could build a car. You could then take it on a road and you could test it and see if it's any better or not. But the problem is it takes time to build, to physically make something. It's quite expensive. Okay, it's the most accurate way, but for, for an end designer or for someone who's trying to come with a completely new concept at a university, uh, this really isn't a quick way to get something new and innovative. So another approach is what we call a wind tunnel test. Now this could be a car, or it could be a plane, or it could be a city. The idea here is that instead of having to make something in the real world, you make up a mock-up of it. And you take it to a facility like this and you blow air over it. Now that is still quite expensive because you actually have to design and make this thing and take it to all these specialist facilities, but it doesn't have to have a working engine, doesn't have to be into the sky. So that, that's an approach, but it's still quite expensive. And for a city, we have a similar thing. You want to build a new skyscraper, you've got to put it in one of these facilities. There are some things, however, that just couldn't go. This is an example of a thousand mile an hour land speed record car that just can't fit in any wind tunnel or do a physical test. So this is where CFD comes in. Now I'm gonna massively simplify this, but essentially we're solving some very complicated mathematical equations and it's a virtual wind tunnel, no manufacturer. You just solve these equations cheap and fast. Is it accurate? Possibly not, that's a key question, but accuracy is linked to compute. And that's where AWS can come in. One example for Formula One is we help them to accelerate their CFD from 60 hours to 10 hours. They didn't have access to wind tunnels or physical tests. They had to use CFD to do it. And we enable them to do it much faster because they can access to the cores uh, that we have. If you're at a university doing a project, instead of having to wait 60 hours to get a result back, 10 hours, that makes a meaningful difference to how quickly you can get research out there and actually do work. Another example is INEOS, Team INEOS for America's Cup. The idea with this is that they need to design a boat well, you have to go through lots of designs. Now this could be in this case, the end, but if you're at a university stage, you might be coming up with new concepts for future races. You want to do lots and lots of designs and you want to break free from any bottleneck of hardware. In this case, they could do more than 15,000 designs on AWS, 20 times more than they could uh, with an on-prem computers. And they could even do a spot to lower their costs. Now, I appreciate some of the stuff I've talked about just now, CFD, doing it through these companies might sound a bit vague and a little bit unsure. So what I wanted to do was to make this quite practical and focused. I wanted to, to very quickly walk you through a demo that we have, a workshop online that guides you right from the beginning from when you just created your first AWS account to going through creating a cluster that you can install your software and run these products and then actually install these codes, popular codes like OpenFoam, for example. So I want to quickly move on. I'm not going to be able to do all of it because it's only 10 minutes, but hopefully enough to give you an insight of how it works, and then you can go ahead and follow this. And below this video, you're going to see a series of links just like these that you can follow to, to do the same thing that I'm going to do. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll move on to the, to the demo now. Okay, so we're here on the, the demo page, essentially the workshop, and if you follow the link that's below, you can get to this page. You basically have a, a few precursor steps like the introduction to AWS, things about the dashboard, what it looks like, things around VPCs and subnets, uh, and essentially just the things that you want to read over to get a bit of an understanding of the intro. Of course, there's plenty of other videos um, that have this sort of content, and we'll put a few links below. What I wanted to do though was skip to the bit, the, the first major bit, which is creating this cluster, this high performance computing cluster where you can actually install your codes and, and run things. So we'll skip to this bit about installing Parallel Cluster. Parallel Cluster is essentially an orchestration tool 
which means you don't have to manually create instances, connect them together, add storage, put a schedule on top. It's all done for you so that you can just jump on, install your code and start running. You don't have to do all the other stuff. So you can install it using a few lines like, like here. And the key thing that you do then is it's all essentially, if I skip down to the bottom here, your entire cluster is just through some lines of code. So you can say what region you want it in, you can say what you want the scheduler to be, the operating system, and that's what I have here on the right. So here's just a quick example of what I mean. You can specify your region, one of the 25 regions that we have at the time of recording. You can specify the head node type. So this is just a node that you log in and submit jobs, so something quite small. And then you can create a series of queues for, for the compute, solve, or the mesh. And you can see that below, you can have lots of different types. And the workshop gives you far more details on that. But essentially, once you've done that, you can actually create the cluster, which is this command. Now, I've already actually done it. So I'm just going to log on to that cluster here. And then you can go on and you can actually install your codes, codes like OpenFoam. This is actually on the website, so you can go through and follow all these steps. Now, once you've installed it, you actually need to run something. So I've got an example case here, so Foam Demo. Of course, as you can see, I've also got other codes like Anthos installed, many other the CFD packages that you may commonly want to have. I can go in and then I can actually have a submission script like this where I'm just going to submit my job. This should look familiar if you know OpenFoam. If you don't, don't worry. We've got explanations on the website. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll just submit this. Now, the key that I've noticed that this is already run, but the key thing with parallel cluster is the compute only comes up as you need it. By default, there's nothing running and therefore you're not paying. This is great for researchers who maybe have quite spiky needs, you know, before a conference happens and you want to actually run something, but then for many months, you're not doing anything and you're just doing maybe some physics-based um, research, you know, or model development, not running anything. So this will start running within a few minutes, comes up, runs the job, you pay for it, it comes down, you stop paying for it. You only have the small things like a head node uh, and the storage. Now, hopefully this has been a quick 10 minute <laughs> introduction, but it gives you a feeling that if you wanna run CFD to do the things that I mentioned, like designing planes or cars or coming up with new models to do that, you can quite quickly follow this tutorial create a HPC cluster, jump in, install the, your code of choice, run the case, and that's it. So uh, I hope that you've at least had a bit of a sense of what's going on here. Um, please follow the links below. You can get a bit more detail uh, on exactly what's go going on in, in the workshop. And um, yeah, I hope you have a fruitful use of the resources on AWS and you can help to your research to uh, design the new cars and planes of the future. So thank you very much.